All right, what is up guys? Coach Show at the Lion's Den and we're doing some whiteboard talk covering a crazy topic on tips for getting huge. And I only have one. I'm gonna put it on the board and let's go. Take lots of drugs. That's it, cool. All right guys, see you later. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I just wanna let the YouTube trolls have some fun with that one. All right, kids, all right, kids, we're back in session. All right, guys, but in all seriousness, okay, I wanna put this video together. Keep it right to the point on how I can help you guys build muscle, okay? And I've been doing this for a long time. I've gone through many different physique changes over the last couple years, but the main premise has always been to keep adding muscle, all right? I've made some mistakes as well, which we'll cover in this video, uh, but we're gonna get right to it, guys, okay? So sound principles to help you guys put on muscle. And first one has to do with nutrition, okay? Nutrition is gonna be a very big part of this. I would say almost all of it, but tracking your food is gonna be the first tip off the bad that we got to address, okay? A lot of people want to get big, uh, and then the same thing applies for losing weight, but since we're talking about mass, you need to know how many calories you eat on a daily basis, okay? So one of the simplest things you can do is track those calories, and there's tons of fitness trackers out there that you can use. They're free, some are paid for, but if it's free, you might as well use it. I love having my clients and myself use uh, my fitness pal. The other one, if you want to pay for it, is the RP Diet app, which, I am a sponsored athlete by them and it takes all the thinking out of this, but that's not the point. The point is that you need to have some sort of way to track those calories on a weekly basis, okay? And once we have those calories, okay, say you track for the day, maybe you track your entire week, you see where the average is. What we wanna do from there is add calories because we're trying to put on weight that the calories that we're tracking have just been to maintain the weight that we're at. Uh, so we wanna add calories. Now, I always like to uh, just add 500 calories, okay? And this is uh, found out through experimentation of, I did uh, a lot of massing phases where I added too many calories and ended up putting on a lot of fat, all right? So there, there's other variables involved with this, but I think 500 is just a little bit of a bump. You're not gonna notice these, these crazy weight gains, okay? Maybe it's gonna be half a pound, quarter of a pound per week, but you have to remember these things compound over time and you want your body to also adjust to what you're doing, okay? So if we went from eating 2,000 calories a day and then just started slamming you know, four or 5,000 calories, you're gonna run into some issues with how you feel, your digestive system, and it's probably not gonna be the best overall physique that you're looking for, okay? So I'm a big fan of doing things right, doing them properly, and focusing on the long-term progress. So I think 500 calories is a great number for you guys to increase those calories by. So say if you're eating 2,000 calories a day, just bump that up to 2,500 calories per day and track that for the next one to two weeks. You know, see what's happening with your weight, your physique, and then adjust from there. But this can't happen unless we know how many calories that we're at each day. So tip number one, guys, track those calories, use some sort of tracker, and then add 500 calories to whatever your base daily caloric intake is. All right, my friends, tip number two, staying within that nutritional uh, spectrum, is going to be eat more protein. All the clients that I have dealt with, even myself when I got into this, was severely under intaking the amount of protein that I needed to be uh, consuming to put on muscle and size, okay? Yes, other macros are important, and we wanna consume other macros, but protein's a big one that stands out, okay? Protein is what builds muscle. All right, so we wanna make sure that we are getting at least 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound of our body weight. Now, when you are massing, typically you can get away with that 0.8. Uh, however, when you're cutting, I would say we wanna get on that higher end to maintain as much muscle as possible. But on the topic of massing, I like to be in that 0.8 to 1.2 grams. Typically for me, a very easy rule of thumb is just one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if I'm 270 pounds, I'm getting in 270 grams of protein. And when I'm taking in calories, obviously I'm massing. If I go over that in protein intake, I'm completely fine with that because I wanna get as much protein as possible to get as jacked as possible. So tip number two, eat more protein. Once you guys are tracking from tip number one, you're probably gonna find that your protein's pretty low, okay? So just simply changing that protein intake gonna get those calories up and help you uh, have a better chance of building muscle. All right, guys, tip number three, still on the nutrition spectrum, is gonna be liquid calories, okay? So 
from doing a couple massing phases, I, I've done some that have gone way better than others. And when I did one, long story short, is I was trying to take in tons of physical food, okay, multiple meals, five, six meals a day. And what I found is that it worked well for a little bit, but then honestly, it just got very challenging. It was mentally draining, it was physically training. I'm just sitting there trying to stuff food, force feed, you know, and it, it became miserable. And I also developed a kind of weird relationship with food where I just didn't want to eat because I was just exhausted and it kind of burnt me out. So uh, in this massing phase, one of the biggest things that has saved uh, just my overall motivation to mass uh, and the quality of the mass has been liquid calories, all right? So if we have, okay, four or five meals and, and it's easy for you to get those down, that's awesome. Uh, but if you're having some issues, guys, shakes are just a fantastic alternative. And what I mean by that is, you know, make your protein shake or literally you can put everything in there, uh, blend it up so that it goes down so much easier than having to have a, a physical uh, food to eat. Now, I know this sounds really gross too, but there's guys like, uh, Derek Poundstone and some other people on the internet who have actually done chicken shakes before. Uh, I would say probably don't knock it till you try it. That's a very, you know, uh, total end of the spectrum thing, but it, it's way easier than taking down two whole chicken breasts on top of your rice, your veggies. When anything is blended or mixed together and it's in liquid form, it's just way easier to consume. It's a little bit easier in the digestive system as well. So uh, for me, like even if it's just a basic protein shake uh, or you just at the end of the night, you know, maybe you do whatever you want to throw in there to give you that extra, you know, uh, amount of calories that you need to be massing. I would highly recommend that just from personal experience. Um, the other thing that's nice is some sort of juice or fruit juice because, you know, you can get those carbohydrates, you can get those calories in. So if you want to do just adding simply uh, some more calories through uh, juice with a couple of your meals or your breakfast, etc. It can gain a, a good amount of calories throughout the day. So you may be able to keep everything the same, but just add in a couple glasses of orange juice or apple juice, cranberry juice, whatever, whatever you like that has calories uh, and, and also does have some nutritional value to it. Uh, you can throw that in. This is a big one for me. I, I'm super weird and I really didn't drink milk. Um, you know, my, almost my entire life, I actually drank a lot of I think I drank milk as a kid, like a little kid, because I definitely remember it was cereal. But then at some point we switched over to more drinking almond milk. I think I did go through a little bit of soy milk at some point. So hence why I, I'm probably half a female. My estrogen levels are through the roof. <laughs> Kidding. Um, but recently I have been drinking a ton of milk. Okay. And uh, it's worked well for my digestive system. But instead of doing a gallon of milk a day, I basically do... Uh, let's just say eight ounces of milk for a couple meals throughout the day. So that's just gonna add up and give me those extra calories. It's heavily dense in protein, as well as having a little bit of carbohydrates and some fat in there. So uh, just a nice alternative and a, and a great substance that you can be adding to your massing phases. Uh, last one is if you're, you're having meals and you're trying to get some extra calories in, specifically fats, because fats are gonna be most dense in calories, just putting some oil or olive oil you know, on top of your veggies or your meal can really go a long way for not that much of how much oil you'd actually have to put on there in terms of the calories that you would gain. So just some, some food for thought when you're massing of just some uh, things you can, you know, help uh, better your mass. All right, guys, switching gears, talking a little bit more about programming uh, and less about nutrition. For tip number four is if you wanna get massive, you gotta program to get massive. And what I mean by that is make sure that your program matches your goals. So for example, if you're trying to put on mass size, okay, you know, get big, look big, feel big and strong, you probably don't wanna have a similar program to someone who's doing an Ironman or a marathon or a triathlon uh, or something that's just burning tons and tons of calories and not having a ton of resistance training or barbell training, using weights, et cetera. Totally cool if that's your thing, but when you're trying to get massive, we want to make sure that it, it follows uh, suit with you know, the training program that we're running, okay? Pretty common sense, but yet again, I see people who are trying to get massive and they're trying to do a million different things, okay? They're burning tons of calories uh, and they're not specifically focused on what they're trying to get better at or, uh, you know, the results they're looking for. So, um, 
bit, like I said, big compound movements, you know, strength based programs uh, are, are going to be king when it comes to putting on mass and size. I love big compound movements. You guys have been following the channel for a long time. There's a reason I do those big compound movements, and I am a strength sport athlete, okay? It goes hand in hand. Um, not to say that you can't do more bodybuilding or higher volume, which I have right here, because if you do add in some bodybuilding, some higher volume stuff, that's going to definitely help put on size. Uh, and, and make you bigger, okay? But the main point too, following back to the other tips, is you gotta make sure that you have the calories to do that. So I kinda have over here, it says less movement. What I mean by that, if the goal is to get massive, okay, right, and we're training really hard, uh, and you're super maybe active outside, uh, and, and you're burning calories elsewhere, it may be time for you to maybe relax a little bit and dial it back. So yes, focus on your training, your nutrition, uh, but we don't wanna keep burning more and more calories doing other things, playing pickup basketball, going and playing flag football, or you're involved with some intramural leagues, maybe you're walking your dog or riding your bike all the time. Now we're just uh, taking away calories and we're gonna have to eat even more to get there, okay? So look at your lifestyle and your programming and it should match up with the goal that you have um, for the big picture, okay? Uh, the other thing is finding a good split. So more often than not, okay, if you've been training, um, there's, let's just say, uh, been some evidence that training frequency above one time per week per muscle group is going to be great. So someone who is a huge fan of higher frequency, uh, I would definitely say that if you can train something more than one time per week, do it, okay? If you train legs on Monday and by Wednesday or Thursday they're feeling recovered and ready to go, you should hit legs again because you don't wanna miss out on that opportunity to cause an adaptation for growth to get more massive, get more jacked, et cetera. So if you're doing that bro split, you're not getting very good results, your nutrition's in check, look at your program, okay? Can you increase the frequency to more than one time per week for those body parts or those lifts, et cetera? Uh, and try that and see how that works for you. So that's just a quick couple uh, little tidbits on programming to match with your massing phase. All right guys, tip number five. This is the last little bit of tidbits that we're gonna sprinkle on top of this mass cake that we've been throwing in the Gaines kitchen now uh, during this video, okay? And this is gonna be called come to terms with gaining fat, all right? Gaining fat, we don't wanna get fat, which sometimes people do because they take massing too extreme, but we just wanna be okay with gaining some fat. So if we make gains, right, say we put on 12 pounds, say, five to seven pounds that is muscle, the remainder is fat, that's okay, uh, because we have to think about long-term progress here, and when we do cut, or when we are training, okay, we have put on more size, more mass, more strength, more muscle, and not get so caught up in the fact that, yeah, we put on some weight, maybe our stomach doesn't look as good as it did, uh, which is a whole other thing, probably time your massing uh, seasonally, okay, so if you're gonna be at the beach all the time, it's probably uh, maybe a little bit better to do a cut during that time versus a mass. That's up to you to figure out. That's the way I look at things. Uh, but when you are, you know, gaining that fat, it's okay. It's part of the process. It's not going to be that way for forever, hopefully. Uh, but it's just going to be what needs to happen when we are massing. Secondly, totally serious, pooping and peeing more, okay? So if we're eating more food and we're consuming more liquid, uh, we are going to be going to the bathroom more. And in the beginning, you're kind of like, damn, you know, I only took a, a morning poo one time a day maybe. Now it's up to two, three times a day. Well, yeah, it's because we have more physical mass in our stomach that needs to break down, so we're gonna be going to the bathroom a little bit more. So maybe that affects your schedule, your work schedule, maybe it affects your life, I don't know, but consider the facts and be okay with it, all right? It's okay to take a healthy dump more than one time per day, all right? So uh, from there on, we have other areas taking a small hit. And what I mean by that is, when I was doing this a couple years ago, I was trying to put on size, um, but I was so consumed with making sure that I kept my cardio in peak shape. And what I realized is, kind of like I said earlier, is I was burning a lot of extra calories uh, trying to keep up with that conditioning, and then I kept trying to eat more, but my weight really wasn't changing much. So now when I mass, uh, I have to hold myself back a little bit, you know, with the conditioning maybe, knowing that I'm trying to focus on putting on quality size and mass and getting better with that. And maybe my conditioning does take a little bit of a hit. Um, that's okay, you know? So just be aware that some other areas may take a hit, but you have to focus on what's the main priority for you during this mass or this phase that you're putting yourself through, okay? So um, just be aware of that it's okay. They may take a small hit, not a big deal. You'll be able to continually make um, different gains in different avenues after you've done your mass. And the last one is just 
long-term gain, guys. Like you're in this for the, for the long haul. So there's no reason to rush it. There's no reason to add in thousands of extra calories right off the bat. Start marginally. Start like with little baby steps. Okay, creating little uh, little habit changes, behavioral changes, uh, nutritional changes, training changes that are going to add up to the big picture over time. Right. And if you do that, you're going to find that your mass phases, whatever other phases you're doing, are going to just look and feel a lot better than if you rushed into things, okay, you took these drastic changes. Uh, so just focus on the long-term game, when I think for a lot of us, it's it's to be healthy, okay? You know, I deal with a small percentage of athletes who all they care about is, you know, world records or being world's strongest this or world's best that, and that's a different mindset. But for most of you guys watching this channel, I want you guys to be healthy all the way, you know, to your deathbed, okay? Or as healthy as you can be. So think about how can we do this in the best way to still get the goals that we want, um, with also preserving our health and our body as best as possible. So I'm a big fan of just small little tweaks over time. It's going to be way more in favor than quick and drastic. Okay, easy come, easy go, right? High risk, high reward, uh, but in the sense of the health game and, and the, the, the gains that we're trying to make, just nice and steady, guys. All right, so that's pretty much my entire video, guys, on massing. Uh, just some general tips, things for you guys to think about. I'm trying to get out more videos pretty frequently, so we're going to do some more whiteboard talks. So